Thousands of crimes of violence in Britain are going unpunished, even murder. We need to shut her up. They're dead. That's what they did. They're committed by those closest to the victims, their families. Some blame their own communities for failing to confront this abuse. Not to demonstrate real leadership on this is extremely irresponsible, it's morally wrong and it's morally blind. No one knows how many women in Britain are being silenced by so-called honour. There's no place for multicultural sensitivity. This is something that we cannot tolerate. A mother remembers a teenage daughter killed by her young boyfriend for shaming his family. It happened in Rotherham. It's still as raw now as what it was then. I try not to think about the attack because I don't know actually what was done to her. I try not to blank that out. Laura's killer was just 17, an Asian born and raised here. But when she challenged his traditional culture, Laura had to be silenced. He was found guilty of her murder last year. He never shown remorse, never, never. In multicultural Britain today, many young people from immigrant communities are well integrated. Yet in many households, old traditions are still a powerful force, and some cause harm. Up and down the country, behind closed doors, crimes are being committed. Kidnap and false imprisonment. Women and girls being beaten, raped and even murdered. And all in the name of so-called honour. The authorities admit that they just don't know the real scale of this abuse. Hello, Carmen Ivano, can you help? Oh, hi, I wonder if you can help me. All right. I'm just seeing a lady who's been referred to our service um, who is receiving um, direct threats from her family to kill her. Yeah, absolutely. There's a national helpline for those being threatened and suffering domestic violence because of honour. The helpline was set up by a Sikh brought up in Derby, Jasvinder Sangera. I was never allowed to walk these streets on my own. We always were chaperoned wherever we went because there was always the fear of dishonouring the family. Jasvinder was 14 when she was imprisoned in her bedroom for refusing to marry a man she'd never met. She ran away from home and the code of honour which still rules here. What we have are families living next to each other. They all become the eyes and the ears of the community and they will all be involved in the honour system. In South Asian and Middle Eastern communities, Controlling the behaviour of women is seen as the key to the family's honour. I was conditioned to learn that from a very young age. It is dishonourable to make eye contact with men, sit with men. And the rules shift and change as you get older. You're not allowed to have boyfriends, be seen talking to the opposite sex, cut your hair, wear makeup. You are taught these are all dishonourable acts of behaviour. And what you understand as a young person is if you engage in this behaviour, you will put yourself at risk. They can be triggers for significant harm, a forced marriage, or even murder. Calls to the Honour Helpline have doubled in the four years since it was set up. The 500 calls a month we're currently receiving, from my perspective, is a drop in the ocean. There are hundreds and thousands out there we've yet to reach. One of the volunteers here, Nana, 
was disowned by her own family. She'd run away from her husband who beat her. She's still afraid of showing her face. Every time he hit me, he used to have an excuse because the first thing he said was, she swore at me or she raised her voice to me. And my parents would say, why did you raise your voice? You know, you kind of deserved it. For them to be disowned in society is like an honor thing for them. It's easier to sacrifice a daughter or a son than it is to sacrifice a society or your extended family who you're trying to please all the time. What did you think would happen? Did you fear you might be killed? A lot of times. Even now, you know, my dad already said it to me. Do you know if you leave him, then you're going to, you're going to make me do something that I don't want to do. No one knows how many honor crimes there are in this country. The latest survey of police force statistics found over 2,800 a year. That's nearly eight a day. And that doesn't even include a quarter of forces who didn't respond. This is one of a handful of refuges in this country just for Asian women and their children. Everyone here has run away from a husband's home where his extended family and honor have made their lives a misery. So, so many times my husband beat me up. He never listened to me, he always listened to my mother-in-law. So he, he was physically violent to you? Yeah, he was physically violent to me, even my mother-in-law as well, and my sister-in-law as well. They always, you know, they disrespect me. They're just like, they treat me like this, I have no honor, I have no respect, I'm just like a slave, that's it. Many of these women come from Pakistan as young brides. Their passports are taken away. They become virtual prisoners, not even allowed to learn English, like Kowal. My mother-in-law hit me so hard in the face that blood poured from my ear. I didn't know anything about the outside world. I couldn't speak the language. I didn't know anything about money. They kept me a prisoner in the house. Once I was locked in the upstairs bedroom for 13 days, I thought the only way I'm going to get out is through the upstairs window or by killing myself. I just wanted to end it all. Nationally, the police response to honor crime has been patchy. Serious mistakes have been made. A murder detective at the Metropolitan Police has had to learn what honor killing in Britain is all about. Heshu stabbed multiple times, Samara 18. 18 times. In every single one of these cases, they involve extreme violence because the murders are committed to send a message to the wider community. But quite often there are multiple perpetrators, so a degree of high organization, quite often precipitated by a family meeting. It was a family meeting that sealed the fate of Banaz Mahmoud. She was a 19-year-old Iraqi Kurd who'd been allowed to leave her violent husband. But when Banaz started secretly seeing someone else and was spotted kissing him outside this tube station in South London, it was too much for the family's honor. They called a meeting of close relatives at their home and they decided to kill her. This is um, a letter that was written by Banas Mahmoud and handed into the police station um, on the 12th of December. And in this letter, she names some of the people whom she has heard are going to be responsible for her murder. She knew who was threatening she her. She had been told who the people were who were going to be responsible for killing her. And the people that she named in there are the people who have been convicted for her murder. <laughs> This video of Banaz was taken by her boyfriend in hospital after her father first attempted to kill her. But Banaz wouldn't press charges. The police didn't recognize the danger she was in, and she went home. What happened on that night was that the police were called, but the officer that turned up simply didn't understand what it was that she was being told. She had no prior knowledge of honor-based violence. Uh, and, and simply didn't believe, in all fairness, what it was that she was being told. 
the police clearly did fail Benaz on that occasion. A month later, Benaz went missing. A murder hunt was launched. Her uncle and father had been detained, but there was no hard evidence against them. All our efforts focused on trying to find uh, Benaz's body. And we, we literally lived and breathed and slept trying to find her. Yeah, I've got the grand crew, uh, got the address, just look in there. Benaz's body was found in the garden of this house over a hundred miles from her home where she'd been murdered. Her relatives had been secretly recorded, boasting of where they'd hidden her. After digging for the whole day, we finally uh, discovered Benaz's body, um, buried six feet deep underneath, the actually under the footings uh, of the house. We'd gone to extraordinary lengths to ensure that we didn't find her. It took five years, even trips to Iraq, to extradite and bring all Benaz's relatives responsible for her murder to justice. Benaz Mahmoud's case was a watershed. It made police and prosecutors realize how serious honor crime had become in this country. We don't know the true figure of honor killings. It's anything between 10 and 12 a year in this country. I don't know how many other unmarked graves there are in our green and pleasant land. I don't know. And that suggests to me that we're underestimating this issue. There are thousands of women in Britain today who live in silence, in fear of their lives because of honor. We can't show you the face of this young Kurdish woman. Leila came here to join her husband, who turned out to be violent and unstable. He put his hands round my throat. He said he would kill me and cut me into pieces and put me in a rubbish bag. No one would even know you were in this country, he said. Even the police wouldn't know about you. There was no reason for him to threaten and insult me. He said to me, when I see you, it makes me crazy. When I beat you up, it makes me feel better. Layla ended up in hospital with serious injuries. But she was pregnant and went back to her husband. Things got worse and she ran away. But leaving her husband hasn't ended the threat of life. The dishonorable thing I did was to go into a refuge, because in Kurdistan, a refuge is seen as a very bad place. Some women cannot escape abusive marriages. The only way out is to silence themselves. Suicide rates among South Asian women in Britain are three times the national average. It's quite stunning statistics when you realize that in fact there's only one other group which has that similar figure, and that's soldiers who return from the war zones of Iraq and Afghanistan, because they themselves, these women, are living in war zones themselves. They, they can think of no other way in which to get away from their situation without dishonoring their family in some way, shape, or form than killing themselves. When Nosheen Azam got married in Pakistan and came to live in Sheffield, she thought she'd be happy. He's my daughter. Yeah. But her father says Nasheen was soon calling home, saying her husband and in-laws were mistreating her. He told her not to leave, for the sake of the family's honor. I told her that the best daughters are the ones who stay in their marital homes until the day they die. The truth is that no man, no Muslim, wants their daughter's marriage to end in divorce, and for them to have to come back home. That wouldn't be right. But things got worse. Nosheen left home three times and went to other relatives in Sheffield, but was persuaded to go back to her husband. Then one day she rang her parents in Pakistan with a chilling warning. Nosheen said, did you sell me to them for money? When you see me next, I won't be alive. I'll be dead. An hour later, the new bride was found on fire in her garden. Her burns are too horrific to show without blurring the photograph. 